Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I have with me relay. I'm going to show you how to operate this relay on a signal coming from a microcontroller. So the signal coming from a microcontroller is of low voltage and low current because the pin can only give maximum 40 milliampere. That too, on a low voltage, suppose you're using an ESP8266, it will give 3.3 volts. If you're using Arduino, then it will give 5 volts. ESP8266 give very low current on the pin. It's 12 milliampere. So it's not enough to turn on this relay. If this relay gets turned on, we know that this NO common is connected to some high voltage. This NO is connected to our device. Then only the device will get power and we can switch high electrical devices. But if the relay is only not turned on, then we have no switching of a high voltage device. So in order to turn on this relay, we require to amplify this current. For that we require a device called a transistor. So this is a transistor which is BC547, this is base, this is emitter, this is collector and this is called BC547. This is a NPN type transistor NPN. That means if we give positive to the base, the negative given to the emitter will switch to the collector. It's that easy. So the base of the transistor will be given to the microcontroller. So before that, let's draw the pin diagram of a relay. So it's a five pin device. So what is a relay? It's nothing but a five pin device like this. This top one is the common. This two pins is nothing but connected to a coil. This coil is a electromagnet which is the insulated copper wire wound around a ferromagnetic material. So when we give 5 volts across these two pins, a magnetic field will develop which will pull the metal plate and that metal plate when it gets pulled it makes some sound. So when the relay trips from NC to NO you will hear a metal clicking sound which I will show you in a minute. So the switch changes position from this NC which is normally closed to normally open. So this is the NO pin, this is the NC pin, this is common. Common is given to some high voltage like uh, 230 volts AC, the voltage at which our load operates, NO is given to load, right? And the common is neutral. So it's just a switch which activated on when this electromagnet is powered. So a relay is also used to provide isolation because there is no physical con connection between the signal and the switch because it's isolated with the magnetic field. The magnetic field is pulling the switch down. Okay. That's why it's a isolation. So that's also use of a relay. So now let's make this circuit with a transistor to turn on the relay on the breadboard. So let's head on to the breadboard. So I'm ready with the breadboard with the 5 volt supply. So this 5 volt supply is coming from my 3 ampere mobile charger, 3 ampere 5 volts. So I will directly power this relay. So the relay coil which is across these two pins, I am directly giving it 5 volts. Because this is a 5 volt relay, as you can see, it is rated for 5 volt DC. So there are also relays which runs on 12 volts. This is a 12 volt relay, this is a 3 volt relay. So the advantage of using a low voltage relay is that you can use the same supply. So this is same 5 volt supply that goes to the microcontroller and also 5 volt can be used to turn on the relay. But suppose you have a 12 volt relay and your microcontroller runs on 5 volts. So you need an external adapter of 12 volts. So now let's energize this coil of the relay directly giving it 5 volts to see whether the relay works or not. So you should hear the clicking sound like this. That means the relay is okay and NO is getting switched. So now let's switch it. Let's check the current that is required by this coil. And obviously it is greater than 40 milliampere. That's why we cannot give it directly to a microcontroller. So let's check the current. So I've set the probe to milliampere. And I will set it to milliampere. And now let's check the current of required by this relay. So 
So this is the current required by the relay, 64.2 milliampere. And obviously it's greater than 40 milliampere. So we cannot use a microcontroller. We can use a transistor, right? So I have a transistor BC547 with me. So I'll connect that transistor and show you how to wire the circuit. So this is a transistor BC547. It is like a D shape. So place the flat side towards you. In the middle pin is the base. The right pin is emitter. Left hand side pin is collector. So the negative given to the emitter will go to the collector when we give positive to the base. Okay. So we'll connect the transistor to the breadboard. For now, I will remove the supply because you know it's always better to make a circuit with supply disconnected. Now I will connect the relay coil. One end will go to the collector. So the maximum collector current is 100 milliampere, and as we saw that this relay takes 65 milliampere, so it's safe to use this transistor. So the emitter is to be given negative. And one diode that goes in parallel with this relay coil. So this diode should be in reverse bias. So this is negative and this black side is positive. So negative, yes, will go to the positive. Positive will go to the negative like this. So why we have connected diode? So that the reverse voltage spike will, will provide a path. So I've talked a lot about reverse voltage spike. The video is, link is given in the description. I have also made a video about inductor, how it works and what is reverse voltage spike. So take a look at that video if you want to know more about inductor spiking. Let's also connect one LED in parallel with this diode. So I will take one resistor of 220 ohms. Let's turn on this circuit and let's give base positive. See, it's turning on. But you can see there is some leakage current, but that doesn't affect the relay. It's for only for the LED. So I have used a pull down resistor, which goes from the base to the ground. And if I pro provide positive to this. You can see the relay turns on. So this signal can come from a microcontroller or any other controller, for example, ESP32, but not ESP8266. I will tell you why. Because for that, because there are some pins which are multifunction. So the disadvantage of using a BC547 is that that also I have given in the blog. So you have to just replace the transistor with a MOSFET. Okay. If you want to use, so this is a MOSFET. So instead of emitter base collector, there is gate drain source in a MOSFET. And this is 2N7000 is N channel MOSFET. So if you were planning to use this microcontroller ESP8266, so it's better to use a MOSFET when dealing with microcontroller pins which have multiple functions. So the circuit diagram of the MOSFET relay driver is given in the blog. Go through the blog. This was the circuit. Thanks for watching.